So in today's video, I'm going to preview in Borough AFC versus Bradford City. And then in the second part of today's video, I'm going to bring you guys my Game Week 43 League 2 score predictions. If you do go on to enjoy, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could try and hit 80 likes on today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your style 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from Saturday's 1-0 win at home at 2 Gillingham? Now, while we might not have much to play for for the remainder of this season, Barrow have still got a hell of a lot to play for. They're currently 7 points away from the automatic promotion places with a game in hand on 3rd place MK Dons. They're currently... A decent amount of points. They're five points above eighth place AFC Wimbledon, but again, have two games in hand on them. So it's looking likely that a playoff finish will be what Barrow end up achieving. Their last couple of matches haven't been particularly great for them. Back-to-back -back defeat, so they'll be looking to bounce back at home. Obviously, this is a rearranged game. It got called off at like 2 p.m. on a Saturday a couple of weeks ago. I think it was the end of February when this game was meant to be played. An absolute shambles from the, from the officials. But make sure to drop a like on there for me. Subscribe if you're new as well. And let's get into it. Channel members ships are now cheaper than ever with tier 1 costing just 99p tier 2 has been reduced from 3.99 a month down to 1.99 a month and tier 3 has been reduced from 8.99 a month down to just 4.99 a month your support as always is massively appreciated and the more members that we have the better the content will be enjoy the rest of the video starting out then with how both teams have got on so far this season my team Bradford City we currently sit 14th in the table after 42 matches we've got 15 wins at 12 draws and 15 defeats scoring 50 goals and conceding at 54 which leaves us on a minus 4 goal difference and 57 points. Our last couple of matches then have been a win, a draw, a win, a loss and a loss. Them last couple of matches then being a 1-0 win at home to Gillingham, a 1-0 draw away at Grimsby Town, a 2-0 win at home to Tramia Rovers, a 3-0 defeat away at Harrogate Town and a 3-0 defeat at home at 2 Notts County. If we compare that then to Barrow AFC, they currently sit 5th in the Skybet League 2 table. After 41 matches they've got 18 wins, 13 draws and 10 defeats. Scoring 50 57 goals and conceding at 45. That leaves them on a positive 12 goal difference and 67 points. Their last couple of matches then been a loss, a loss, a win, a win and a draw. Their last couple of matches then been a 2-0 defeat at home to Swindon Town. A very surprising result in that one. They also had a 2-1 defeat away at Morecambe FC. A 3-1 win at home to Grimsby Town. A 1-0 win at home to Newport County and a 0-0 draw at home to Harrogate Town. Now for the large part under Pete Wilde, Barrow have been a very, very good side at their home ground so it is going to be a very tough game for us. But now we're going to get into the team that I would go with if I was Graham Alexander. Now our form over the last couple of matches has been pretty decent so I would personally stick with the 3-1-4-2 formation. In goal I've gone with Sam Walker. I thought again on Saturday had a really really good game made. One or two outstanding saves especially in the first half made one really really excellent save. I can't remember which Gillingham player it was who got the attempt off but it was a really good save from Sam Walker and then a couple other decent saves which you probably expect him to make but his standards have been excellent since he has come in from Charlton. The only slight criticism that I have of Sam Walker is sometimes he can be a little bit glued to his goal line and even when the ball's in the six yard box he's still wanting the defenders to deal with it which is a disappointment that I have of him but on the whole a massive improvement on Harry Lewis and deserves to start in between the sticks once more. At right centre back I've gone with Daniel Yigoke. I thought again on Saturday I had a really really good game since Harrogate where he was absolutely shocking when he moved into the back three and to be fair even when he played central midfield against Grimsby I think he has been really good if I'm honest with you yeah, I think he's massive improved and this is where Mark Hughes was going to play him at the start didn't work out got sent off in his first game but that was because we were playing with Sam Stubbs played in that game I think Liam Rydaug uh, sorry Ash Taylor played in that game not Sam Stubbs Liam Rydaug was in the back five as well but now we've got a very good consistent solid back five who are very good for this level or you go okay it's time to look better and better and for the large part had a really really good game against Gillingham so he would start on the right side for me in the middle I've gone with Matty Platt he is so important to decide the stats prove it you know the amount of games where he's played and we've got a positive result from or we've kept a clean sheet he's been absolutely phenomenal for us this season and I really hope that he does sign a new contract with the football club obviously playing against his former club there's quite a possibility they could be in league one next season and Platt 
could also be in League One. Will it be back with Barrow? Highly unlikely, but if he chooses not to stay at the football club, I think that would be a massive loss for us because I think he has been excellent for the large part this season. And at left centre back, then I have gone with Kieran Kelly. I thought against Gillingham had a fairly solid game. You know, they've got a couple big physical threats up there, and I thought Kelly on the whole did have a solid game. There were times where Malone or Maloney, I think it's Maloney, picked up the ball and was trying to get at Kelly, but for the large part, he dealt with him pretty well. Came off in the game with injury, but it looked like that was just cramp and he didn't want to let the boys down, I think Graham Alexander said. So that was a smart move from him we got Tomkinson I managed to see the game out and it's crazy to say Tomkinson might not actually be in the back three at this moment in time because obviously he was away for international duty and now he's struggling to get back in because this back three for the large part have been very good over the last couple of weeks as my holding midfielder then I have gone with the captain at Richie Smallwood again after Saturday he gets loads of criticism from certain sections of our fan base and I just don't understand why yes at times he loses the ball or he gives the ball away and it's frustrating but so does every other player and I feel like when Smallwood makes a mistake compared to every other player he gets highlighted so much more and I just don't really understand it a lot of people saying they can't wait for his contract to expire in the summer and I just personally don't see it I think he's really important to how we want to play I think this position in this formation that suits him massively and it gets the best out of him so for me personally he starts as the holding midfielder at right wing back I've gone with Brad Halliday I thought on Saturday we saw Halliday back to his best recently he has had a few off games but defensively again against Gillingham absolutely outstanding going forward at times he has been a little bit questionable over the last couple of weeks but obviously scores the goal a fantastic finish on his left foot and that's what Halliday needs to do more of be confident to get the ball on the left foot or right foot take shots on and if you don't shoot you don't score yes the keeper should probably save it but it's still a really good strike from Halliday who on the whole had another outstanding game as my two chance from midfielders then at first I've gone with Jamie Walker I thought again against Gillingham had a pretty positive game once I really noticed him too much to be honest with you but him having him in the side is much better than having someone like oh you go okay I'll Gilead in that midfield he gives you the attacking quality that you need in that final third so he starts in midfield alongside for me personally Bobby Poynton I thought against Gillingham had a better game than what he did against Grimsby wasn't really marked out of it had some nice touches at times sometimes you can lose the ball but as an attacking player I don't mind that when you're trying things trying to create things and get shots off nearly scored in the first half as well shot dragged just wide before we actually scored our goal it was a good attempt from him and as my left wing back then I have gone with Lewis Richards now I don't think Tyreek Wright was too bad against Gillingham I think that was probably his best performance since returning to the football club at the weekend but against Barrow who were a much better side especially going forward than Gillingham away from home I think I'd rather have that defensive security if I'm honest with you Richards only played that last five or ten minutes plus top each time so he's gonna be fairly fresh coming into this one and I just feel like that's a change that does make sense if he goes Tyreek Wright I don't mind it too much much when you're away from home against the team in the playoffs who are chasing automatic promotion clearly a much better side than what we are I just feel like I'd rather have that bit more defensive security at left wing back and as my two strikers then at first I've gone with Andy Cook now on the whole I thought he had a poor game against Gillingham we saw that Andy Cook that we don't like to see with a lot of moaning and complaining when the pass isn't perfect to him he was just kind of stopping and sulking a little bit I think is probably the best way to describe it defensively from set plays he was quite important to us with the long throws and corners coming into the box with Gillingham being a big physical side he was important for that but going forward didn't really offer as much and hopefully he can come up with a goal in this one against one of his former clubs and partnering him I've gone with Callum Kavanagh not really many options at this moment in time Kavanagh on his day can be a good player I thought started out well against Gillingham but faded towards the end of it played really well last week against Tramia and then against Grimsby his partnership with Smith didn't really work. I'd much rather have Kavanagh starting over Tyler Smith. I certainly see Kavanagh being here for a longer period of time than Tyler Smith, despite the fact they've got, but they've both got the same length of contract. But Kavanagh, for me, I think offers a bit more, especially physically as well. On the bench now, for me, that I'd leave Colin Doyle, Jonathan Tompkinson, Noah Wadsworth, Kevin McDonald, Clark Adore, Tyreek Wright, and Tyler Smith. The players currently unavailable are Sam Stubbs, Alex Gilead, Alex Patterson, and Jake Young. So the players who miss out then through selection would be Ash Taylor, Liam Rydog, Adam Wilson, Harry Chapman and Matt Derbyshire. Now then we're going to get into my Game Week 43 League 2 score predictions. Despite tomorrow not actually being a registered game week, there is still eight matches for us to go through and predict because a lot of clubs have had a lot of postponements this season because of the weather. In terms of the first game then between Mansfield Town and Forest Green Rovers, I'm back in the Stags at a 4-2 one win. Doncaster Rovers, who have been on incredible form recently versus Walsall FC, who've also been on pretty decent form. I am back in the home side though, 4-2 one win. Morecambe FC versus Crow Alexandra. 
I'm back in the away side at 4 2 1 win. Newport County versus Accrington Stanley, I'm back in the home side at 4 2 0 win. Harrogate Town versus Grimsby Town, I think finishes in a 1 0 draw. Wrexham AFC versus Crawley Town, I think finishes in a 2 0 draw. Barrow AFC versus Bradford City, I think finishes in a 0 0 draw. And finally, Colchester United versus Stockport County, I'm back in the away side at 4 2 0 win. But I'm going to leave it there then for today's video. If you have enjoyed, please make sure to drop a like on there for me. If you could channel 80 likes, as I said at the start of today's video, that would be massively appreciated. Subscribe if you're new as well. We're on the road to 9,000 subscribers, so please make sure you are subscribed if you haven't already with that post notification bell on. It's free to do so, and it does massively help out. Get your thoughts in as well down in the comment section down below. Let me know down below your score prediction for this match. What would your starting 11 be as well? Would you make any changes from Saturday's 1 0 win at home to Gillingham? Go check out the six things we learned and the match day vlog from that game as well. Thank you all for watching. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you very soon for another one. Peace.